self-regulation failure due to negative affect. Emotional states like stress, sadness, anger, or frustration occurs when emotions overwhelm a person's ability to control their thoughts, actions, or behaviors. Essentially, negative emotions can impair self-control, leading to impulsive or counterproductive behavior. Here's an in-depth look at how this process works. The role of affect in self-regulation. Affect, or emotional state, plays a crucial role in self-regulation. When people are in a positive emotional state, they tend to have better control over their impulses, make more deliberate decisions, and stay motivated toward their long-term goals. On the other hand, negative emotions can erode self-regulatory resources and lead to impulsivity or avoidance. Mechanisms, cognitive overload, negative emotions, e.g. anxiety or sadness, can consume cognitive resources. When someone is preoccupied with their emotional state, they have fewer mental resources to devote to self-regulation. For example, stress can make it difficult to focus on a diet or stick to a study schedule. Dysfunctional coping. People often try to manage or escape from negative emotions through behaviors that offer immediate relief but can be harmful in the long term. Emotional eating, substance abuse, or procrastination are common examples of coping strategies that reflect self-regulation failure. Depletion of self-control. Self-regulation requires mental energy. When people are under emotional strain, their capacity for self-control can become depleted, which is sometimes referred to as ego depletion. For example, someone who's had a stressful day might find it harder to resist temptations, like overeating or smoking, due to a weakened ability to manage impulses. Two, negative affect and behavioral consequences. Different types of negative emotions can lead to self-regulation failure in distinct ways. Stress. Under high levels of stress, people tend to engage in habitual or automatic behaviors rather than deliberate, goal-oriented actions. Stress triggers a fight-or-flight response that prioritizes immediate survival over long-term planning, often resulting in impulsive decisions. Anger. Anger can lead to rash, aggressive behaviors. It narrows one's focus, causing people to react impulsively without considering consequences. Anger reduces patience and tolerance, which are essential for self-regulation. Sadness and depression. Negative emotions like sadness or depression can lead to withdrawal or avoidance behaviors. People may procrastinate or disengage from tasks they know are important because the emotional burden makes it hard to muster the energy or motivation to act. Frustration. When faced with repeated failures or obstacles, frustration can lead to giving up or acting out in a way that contradicts one's long-term goals. For example, a person on a weight loss journey who encounters repeated setbacks may give in to emotional eating as a way of coping with frustration. Tasha 3, Psychological Theories Behind Self-Regulation Failure. Several psychological theories explain how negative affect contributes to self-regulation failure. Mood Regulation Theory. This theory posits that people often engage in behaviors to improve their mood rather than achieve their long-term goals. For example, if someone is feeling anxious or sad, they may eat comfort food, drink alcohol, or engage in mindless social media scrolling to feel better in the short term. These behaviors provide immediate relief but undermine self-regulation. The Strength Model of Self-Control. This model, proposed by Roy Baumeister, likens self-control to a muscle that gets fatigued with use. Negative emotions can drain self-regulatory strength, leaving individuals more susceptible to giving in to temptations or abandoning goals. Emotional distress may accelerate this depletion, leading to earlier and more frequent self-regulation failures. According to cognitive appraisal theory, how a person interprets and evaluates their emotional experience affects their self-regulatory success. If they appraise a situation as overwhelmingly negative, they may feel powerless or hopeless, leading to avoidance or impulsive behavior. On the other hand, if they reframe the situation more positively, they are more likely to stay engaged and regulated. Four, strategies to mitigate self-regulation failure. There are ways to manage negative affect and mitigate its impact on self-regulation. Mindfulness and emotional awareness. Being mindful of one's emotional state without judgment can help individuals recognize when negative effect is undermining their self-regulation. 
Techniques like deep breathing or meditation can also reduce emotional intensity, making self-control easier. Cognitive reappraisal. Reframing negative emotions in a more positive or neutral light can reduce the emotional impact. For instance, viewing a setback as a learning opportunity rather than a failure can keep one on track with long-term goals. Incremental goal setting. Breaking large tasks into smaller, more manageable steps can reduce frustration and help maintain self-regulation. This can prevent overwhelming emotions from taking over, as the person feels a sense of accomplishment with each small success. Delay of gratification. Training oneself to delay gratification, for example, using strategies like if-then planning, can help override impulsive behaviors in response to negative emotions. This involves creating specific plans for how to handle emotional triggers. Five, conclusion. Self-regulation failure due to negative affect is a complex phenomenon where emotions like stress, frustration, and sadness overwhelm a person's ability to control their behavior. This can lead to impulsive or avoidant actions that are often counterproductive to long-term goals. Understanding the mechanisms behind this failure, such as cognitive overload, dysfunctional coping, and ego depletion, can help in developing strategies to manage emotions and maintain better self-regulation.